Hey friends, you ready to talk about goals? Because you know that your girl is always excited to talk about goals. Now, if you're looking for the video where I share all my 2022 goals that I hope to accomplish next year, that video is coming very soon. But what I purposely do every year is also do a video where I do kind of like a year recap or wrap up, taking some time to look back at my goals that I set at the beginning of the year in my bullet journal, in my notion. I look back at the content I created, pictures I've taken, and I write everything down that I can be grateful for and thankful for and that I want to remember. And you guys know that one of those things is that I finally am a published author. <laughs> And I do this because I don't know about you guys, but it is so easy for me to get so excited about the future and what's ahead that I forget to really take stock of what has already happened. This way I can really dive into the future, having a really great mindset, being proud and thankful for this past year. Also having learned a lot from the mistakes I've made and just ready to bring that into the new year so I can have my best year yet. I always love videos like this because I think they're so inspirational and encouraging. So I hope you guys do too. And I would love to hear down below in the comments Comments. What are your biggest accomplishments this year? What can you be thankful for or most grateful for? Or what did you learn? Because I'd love to celebrate with you guys too. The first thing I do when practicing gratitude for the year is I go back to the original goals I set in January. More specifically, I organize those goals into one to three main categories. In the past few years, I've had writing and kind of publishing is in there. And then I have had platform and then business. But last year, I realized that business and platform was kind of becoming one in the same because they both support the main goal of writing and publishing. So I basically melded them into one. Then after I set my categories, I pick one main goal for each category that I'm going to shoot for for the year. Then I brainstorm a series of tasks that I can spread across the year to actually get me to accomplishing those goals. This doesn't mean I don't work on anything else for the rest of the year, but having a few main goals that I focus on really acts as a compass for me. When I have too long of a list of goals for the year, I can feel very pulled in like a million different directions and it's very easy to get distracted by the shiny things. But when I only have a few main goals, it's really easy to go back to those goals and ask myself, okay, these shiny things that may or may not be distractions, are they actually going to get me to reaching those main goals? And if not, or they're actually going to hinder me getting to those goals, then I can really think, okay, maybe this is something that I should actually say no to. These goals are actually part of an eight step strategy that I've been using the last few years to set and accomplish my goals. And as you can see from some of these past videos, I've had a lot of success, which has been awesome. And I found this process so helpful that I ended up creating a goal setting workbook for myself that I also end up giving to my patrons over on Patreon too. This workbook walks you through not only creating a gratitude log for the current year, but also narrowing down your new year's goals, creating practical steps to actually achieve them, breaking that down into quarterly and monthly tasks, creating a weekly time block schedule, tips on how to find accountability buddies, which I have found so helpful. And also I added this year some tips about what to do when you start falling behind, because God knows all of us do at some point. If you'd like to use it yourself, you can go join my writer support group over on Patreon for just $2 and you get that downloadable along with a ton of other archived templates and exclusive resources that only my patrons get. But don't run away yet because right now we're gonna dig into my goals this past year and how they went. For my first category of writing slash publishing, my specific goal was to finally become a published author by self-publishing my YA fantasy series on Wings of Ash and Dust, which I did. Even more specifically, I wanted to at least rapid release all the eBooks as a serial by summer of 2021. The fun part though is talking about how I actually got there. And I have a handy dandy list on my phone, so I'm gonna reference it a little bit. First of all, I finished working with my developmental editor and cover designer. Then I worked with a final round of beta readers and with my copy editor. And I think I wrapped up most of that around like May and June. Then I started working on formatting the eBooks. I set up an ARC team, which was so much fun to help me promote the books. And then I fast released a new episode every two weeks from August to mid October. One thing I want to celebrate too is some of the books that got that number one new release sticker on Amazon, which was really fun. And most of them hit top 100 lists in the categories they were listed in. But what was probably the most fun aspect and one of my sub goals in this category was to start building a fandom for my books. Along with that arc team I mentioned that really got excited about promoting the books, I created a fairy clan quiz that anybody can take to find out which fairy clan from my book they belong in. I ran weekly read-along activities here on YouTube and 
happen on Instagram. One of those was a fan art competition and oh my gosh, that was so much fun. I'll show some of the artwork here. It was so cool. I started a fan Facebook page and I also sold a bunch of merch that has my characters on it and the different fairy clans so people could represent their clan. And it was just so cool to see people posting how excited they were about the story and the characters and really getting into the world and getting into the fandom. I did also have some reach goals in this category that I didn't quite make. But again, because the main goal was to get the books published, these were kind of secondary. And I knew that I could always do them in the future. So in this category, I kind of set up good, better, best goals. And I've talked about this idea in the past, but it's really, really helpful when you can take a specific goal and say, okay, my good goal is that I'm going to publish all of these ebooks by the end of the year. And then I'm going to take a much needed break after that. Then I said my better goal was to not only do that, but also release the paperback version of my book where all the episodes are going to go into one physical novel. Now I didn't get this done, but I do have the book all formatted and pretty much ready to go. So technically I almost got this goal done and the paperback is due to come out by January. So I was super close with this goal. Then my best goal was not just to get the ebooks out and maybe the paperback out, but to start working or at least researching on how I could create an audiobook for this series. Now, if you saw my video last week, you know that part of the reason why I didn't get the paperback done and didn't start working on the audiobook is because I'm pregnant. So frankly, I had to slow down a lot. I had to readjust some things. But again, I hit my main goal of publishing the ebooks. So I still consider this category a success. Oh, and I had one more kind of related goal to this category, which was to read more this year. And I had a goal of 30 books, which you can see on my Goodreads. Right now I have 19 checked off, but technically it should be more like 25 when you include me having to reread my own books again and again as I was editing them. So we'll see if in the last few weeks of December I can read the last few books I need to hit 30, but I still think I read a whole lot more than if I didn't set a reading goal at all. And I learned a whole lot about writing from reading the books I read, which is part of why I put this goal in my writing category. Then my second main category for the year was business and my platform is sort of under that. And the specific goal I had for that was to have a dependable monthly income, kind of make that exceedingly more passive as time goes on by creating content that gives value to you guys and supports my books and my business. And how did we get there? Here are the tasks. One thing that really helps me is I have multiple streams of income that I've set up. I have YouTube, which includes monetization and also my YouTube membership, Patreon, my author website course, my book merch, which I actually set up last year, the affiliates that I'm a part of. And then this year I added income stream number six, which is my books. Financially, I also had good, better, best goals. And looking back, I made at least my good goal every single month this year. I also need to celebrate that I finally started my LLC, which is called Fable Song Books. And here's a cute logo that I created for the company. And this helps me not only publish my books under my own kind of publishing company, but it also helps separate your business finances from your personal finances, which can be really helpful in the future. One reach goal that I had this year was for my author website bootcamp, where I actually wanted to run the course live a couple times this year, but with publishing, it was just a lot. So I decided not to do that. The course was still available all year and I did get a bunch of sales, which was really great, but maybe I'll run the course live next year. So stay tuned for that. Specifically for my platforms, which again, help support my business and connect with you guys as my audience and my readership. I finally hit over 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So if you've hit that subscribe button, if you've been with me for years or you've just found me, oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you so much. 10,000 is just a really cool milestone to hit. And it also enables me to do a couple fun things on my channel, like feature my merch below my videos. So thank you so much. I also hit over 5,000 followers over on Instagram, over 4,000 newsletter subscribers, and just recently, Recently, I started a TikTok, so that's a fun adventure that I've kind of wanted to dig into. So technically I can check that one off too. Overall, I think we can say I had a pretty good year and reliving it with you guys makes me that much more encouraged and excited to dig into goals for 2022. Once again, I'll be using my goal setting workbook. So if you want to see how I end up doing that, that video is going to be coming soon. And if you want to check out the workbook yourself, again, you can always join my Patreon. I know a bunch of my patrons have already already started downloading it and using it. And I'm so excited to actually work with a few of them in the higher tiers on Patreon at the end of the month, where I run a live goal setting workshop where I help everyone not only hone their goals even more, but create that step by step 
game plan that can help them really succeed throughout the year. And before the year is over, I actually really wanted to do a tutorial on my new favorite productivity tool, which is Notion. I've always loved my bullet journal, but I've started using Notion since publishing because I had so many to do's I had to keep track of, and it has been fabulous. And I know some of you guys have been requesting that tutorial, so I'm working on it and it's coming soon. If you don't want to miss it, make sure you're subscribed and I will also link it in the description when it goes live. In the meantime, you can check out one of these two videos on goal setting tips and we'll see you there.